G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin. I'm an American writer living in beautiful Sydney, Australia. And there are some dirty Aussie words that really do confuse Americans. Some of them might not even be that dirty here in Australia, but in the States, oh boy. These can be dirty, filthy, sexy, offensive. The list goes on, so let's dive into some dirty Aussie words that confused this American the first time I heard them. Grab a bicky, grab a cuppa, and let's get right into this video. Number one, and I'm not afraid to say the word, but I am going to have to censor it for you too because it doesn't like it. Number one is the C word. In the States, it is probably the most offensive thing that you can call a woman. And in all fairness, it's pretty offensive here in Australia too when you use it in that context. But other than the insult and the female body part, that word typically isn't used in the States. Here in Australia, while people don't go saying it every other word, it is a lot more common here, and it's typically in conjunction with some sort of descriptor, whether you're a mad C word, a funny C word, a sick C word, those are all actually compliments. But if somebody is just flat out calling you a straight up C word, that's clearly an insult. You kind of have to take the word in context to how it's being used and the situation that it's being used in. If you're fighting with somebody and they drop the C word, chances are it's not going to be a compliment. When I first came over here, I was surprised to hear people actually use it and use it in multiple different contexts. Number two is root, which is very different compared to the States. Here in Australia, they are not going to root, root, root for the home team like you hear in that old school song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. No, root here is a very crude, kind of bogan way of saying fuck. Like the crude actual action of fucking, not just fuck this, fuck that. So when you talk about Aussies rooting or having a root, they are not talking about cheering, they're talking about sex. So if they're good at it, they might actually be cheering afterwards. Number three is rubber, and to Aussies this is completely innocent, to Americans it is not. Rubber in the States besides material means condom. So when you're in Australia and there are little kids asking for a rubber, clearly that's not what they're talking about. A rubber in Australia is an eraser. So something that is completely innocent to Aussies confuses the hell out of Americans the first time they hear it, especially because it could be coming out of a little kid's mouth. Number four is pash, and I heard this a few times before I actually understood what it meant. Pash is just to make out, but the reason it's pash is like it's passionately making out, so shortening it to pash. I swear Aussie slang is just on another level. So if anybody is pashing, having a pash, it just means that they're making out kind of intense. Number five, and this one gets Americans in trouble all over the world, not just in Australia, is Fanny, which is also an unfortunate nickname for any woman named Francine. <laughs> but Fanny in Australia and the UK and I think a few other countries is actually a woman's vagina. So when a woman in the States is wearing a fanny pack in Australia and other countries, it's actually called a bum bag. You do not want to call it a fanny pack over here. You are going to get laughed at so much. <laughs> Number six is Randy. So if your name is Randy, I feel so bad for you if you come to Australia. Randy is a word that people will use to describe being aroused or turn on. You're getting Randy. You're feeling Randy. So you can see why if somebody is named Randy and they come over here to visit, us are probably going to pick on them. So I feel so bad if anybody's named Randy and they decide to visit anywhere outside of the U.S. Because in the U.S. that word is just a name. Now number seven is crack on. Aussies probably know what that means. To Americans, it goes way over our heads. Crack on is something I'd heard a few times until I actually had it explained to me at some point. I thought cracking on was like, okay, maybe having a joke or making fun of somebody a little bit, which so makes sense because of how Aussies do crack on, which is flirting. Aussies are notorious for having that slightly dry, sarcastic sense of humor of taking the piss out of each other, of making fun of each other. So to my American ears, it does make sense that crack on would come across as picking on somebody, teasing somebody, joking with somebody, when in Australian, crack on actually means to flirt. So if you're out of the pub with somebody and some guy comes up to your friend and starts cracking on to them, they're not necessarily joking with them, although they probably are because they're trying to flirt with them. Number eight is pissed. Typically in the States, pissed just means you're angry. Normally, like, you're really angry if you're pissed or you're pissed off. In Australia, pissed also means you're drunk. So if somebody in the pub is pissed, there's a small chance they could be angry, but most likely people mean that they're saying that they're drunk. 
which is also why people say like I'm getting on the piss this weekend basically means I'm planning on drinking a lot this weekend and number nine I feel like you guys already knew that this one was going to make the list and that is thongs <laughs> yes it confuses so many Americans when they hear Ozzy's talking about needing to grab a pair of thongs because in the states we all know that thongs are called flip-flops and thongs in the states are typically what you call g-strings here in Australia and g-strings in the states are also g-strings in Australia which when you think about it given the structure of an actual thong it does make sense because that little bit does go between your toes to keep everything together it makes sense to call them thongs but to Americans it is going to take a little while to get used to hearing and eventually saying thongs it's taken me well over two years I can say it with no problem I don't bat an eye with it but when I'm talking to American friends and family back home I try to make sure that I say flip-flops so that's it for this video you guys a few kind of dirty-ish Aussie sayings and phrases that confused this American the first time I heard them so are there any that you thought should have made this list or any that you think I don't know let me know in the comments down below and I hope you guys like this video if you did please hit the like and subscribe button down below I really do appreciate the support I would love to get this channel to 15,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I can only do that with your help so if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button I so greatly appreciate the support, you guys, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.